So next, I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Din Tai, uh, who is um, the uh, co-founder and chief scientific officer of Histo Index in Singapore. He has ample experience and expertise in imaging analysis, um, artificial intelligence, and uh, machine learning, especially in liver uh, diseases, and including NASH and liver fibrosis. So uh, we, will, we are very happy to have uh, Dr. Dean Tai to join us. Please, Dean. Thank you, Meshu, for the introduction and the organizer for inviting me to give my. Today, I'm going to share with you uh, about how AI can, can come into play with all the NASH uh, problems and studies you heard about earlier. So I'm going to come really just to show you two examples of what uh, AI have done or particularly what we have done in the, uh, using AI in the field of NASH clinical studies. So first one, we are going to look into how do you, how do we use AI to assess fibrosis? Specifically, will be addressed, you know, really the, the heterogeneity nature of fibrosis that we have seen and the dynamic activities. So I'm going to elaborate a bit more, but more, uh, what I hope to do is to show you a solution that we can provide using AI to address the problems, the heterogeneity and the dynamic activity. Now, something we, then the next example we're gonna share with, this is something that's very recent, okay? So, especially in the field of NASH, there is a lot of steatosis reduction we heard in the previous talks. So how will this impact on the fibrosis assessment? So this is a very new data. And really, uh, at this point, uh, we have more questions than answers. So without further ado, let's move on to look at fibrosis. Now, to begin with, this is our current assumption on fibrosis regression. We know that CRN system is being used to assess fibrosis in NASH patients. It goes from zero to four, very similar in all other disease. And we assumed regression is a four to one, four to zero is a direct reversal. And if we do quantification, it's a mirrored image. You see the red arrow and the green arrow. The red is the progression and the green is the regression. They are identical. Okay, and this is actually the assumption. Okay, and it has been used in all clinical trials, used in all uh, development of the drugs, etc. But this is the actual needle biopsy sample we have seen. Okay, so this is a needle biopsy from a NASH clinical trial, and you can see that you can see bridging fibrosis, uh, perisinusoidal fibrosis. So for this biopsy, we will call it F three. Now. If we get a biopsy looking like this, uh, where you have a nodule feature in the middle, this is an F4. So that is quite clear. This is a progression because you go from F3 to F4. If you get a needle biopsy, uh, you no longer have bridging fibrosis. You don't have nodule fibrosis. You only have peripodal, perisinusoidal fibrosis. This is an F1 or F2 kind of fibrosis. Again, you can call it regression because it's from F3 down to F1 or F2. Unfortunately, most of the biopsy we see in these clinical trials, it, go, it looks like something at the bottom. You still have bridging fibrosis, you have perisinous fibrosis, et cetera. So it is by definition still F3. So it's actually no change. But over here, I really want to highlight you, first of all, what's heterogeneity? That means you actually can see that the bi biopsy, you have some F3 features here, you have some F2, F1 features there. So it's not uniform. Secondly, dynamic. What that means is actually we start to see some progression and regression features at the same time after treatment. So on this part of fibrosis, you actually can see it, it gets better. You see regression, but at the same time, you see progression. And it's actually very common. It's kind of not surprising given it's a metabolic disease. So your treatment is not eradicating the cause. 
So the dynamic means coexistence of progression and regression. So for what, for what we do, I just want to highlight that in addition to the artificial intelligence, we also use a special imaging technique. It's using second harmonic generation and two photon. So the benefit of this is really to do the imaging without the need of doing staining. So everything you see here is looking at the second harmonic generation and two photon uh, autofluorescence. So we're looking at the autofluorescence. So the reason why we want to do that is we, we get much higher reproducibility by removing the staining. And this entire system is really designed so that we get more consistent data for samples from multi-center studies. In this case, it's clinical trials. Data are coming, samples are coming from all over the world. So, uh, and then we have also published uh, just earlier this year that this, this actually uh, significantly improved the intra-observer kappa, at the same time reducing the screen failure rate, which is a big problem in mesh clinical trials. So with that, I want to move to you. How do we do machine learning? This is the NASH CRN table. Uh, that means it, is, it describes to you how is the staging of fibrosis done using the NASH CRN system. And over here, I'm going to highlight some keywords in different colors, pseudo fibrosis, portal, periportal fibrosis, et cetera. So what I have learned from this table is that these fibrosis in these particular keywords are very important. So what we have then used our AI to do is we measured the, each of these keywords separately. So for example, you can see the portal fibrosis, it kind of goes up from zero to F4. It's very much what we expected. Something that's kind of surprising to me in the beginning is like periportal fibrosis. It actually slowed down by the time it reaches F4. And then even more problematic for me or more surprising for me is the perisinusoidal fibrosis actually going down. It kind of disappears when it's F4. So on top of that, you have bridging fibrosis that really starts at F3. Nodule fibrosis really starts at F4. So I think these are the data that we have seen in clinical trials. Uh, while it is not surprising to most of the pathologists, in fact, most of the pathologists, they are kind of aware too. But this is where it really contradicts in our very first assumption that regression and progression is the same. Because looking at it this way, you have many ways to progress. And that also means you have many different ways to regress. So uh, we think we develop a better way to visualize such kind of multidimensional data. So radar map is one example we, we use often to look at that data from multiple dimensions. So using a five dimensional radar map, looking at the five features, this is now what the first biopsy looked like just now using radar map. And you can see our AI is quantifying all these five key features and you can see a blue shape here. Now you get a second biopsy just now. You, you, now, you now can see overall area go in, increased. So it's getting worse. But at the same time, you can see where is the progression happening. Or alternatively, you can also look at the regression in, in the, the green. So what we are showing to you is that in the current assumption or the current way of doing it, people just take one number, which is what we call the total weighted score. You can kind of translate that to the fibrosis staging. But what we are saying is that there is actually a lot of information. So over here is a five dimensional information. You have portal fibrosis, periportal fibrosis. So to really just use one number, which is the total weighted score to record all of them, you lose a lot of information. So the AI here, in this case, it helps you to capture the dynamic and the heterogeneous nature of fibrosis. At the same time, it still gives you a total weighted score, the final staging. So it, it helps you to better understand what's happening in fibrosis. Now I'm gonna move on to talk about steatosis reduction and how is this affecting fibrosis potentially. So this is a, a work done by Dr. Stephen Harrison, who was the earliest speaker. This is uh, data from one of the clinical trials. Uh, 
that was published in 2021. Okay, so this is a study with the Edafirman. This is a top line data that's uh, released. In short, they have shown st st statistical significant liver fat content. So you can see in placebo, a 2.7% reduction and treated group, 7.7% reduction. So while there's a such a high uh, still, uh, liver fat reduction, but you see the fibrosis improvement and the NASH improvement, as well as the fibrosis and NASH improvement, although there is a trend in the treating arm, but it did not reach statistical significance. Okay. So then we take our methodology looking at this data. So on the left, this is uh, the pathologist read on all uh, the patients. So the regress patient, meaning the patient's fibrosis go down by one stage, no change, or progress, meaning goes up by one stage or more. Okay. So over here from the pathologist read, you can see the fibrosis and the steatosis result. In the middle is we're using the AI to do a AI read on fibrosis and steatosis. On the right is what we call continuous read. So this is really where we don't use the stage one, two, three, four. We use AI to measure fibrosis directly as quantitative measurement. And then we look at the quantitative change. So over here, what I want to highlight to you is that uh, for steatosis, you pretty much see the same trend. You, they reached statistical significance uh, with pathologist read, with AI read all over the place. But on the top, you see fibrosis. It did well. It did not reach statistical significance, but it did reach. Eventually, if you use fully quantitative measure on the top right, the continuous value, you actually see treated patients reach statistical significance. So, so it shows you that there are some changes. Now the question is, where are these changes? Okay. So we really dive down to use AI, this is again using AI. So looking at, you know, is potentially, is steatosis, is that affecting, is steatosis reduction affecting fibrosis assessment? So this is one example. This is a, a study from Resometeron Madrigal phase two. And so together with Harrison, we published it, uh, we, we, we looked into this. This is a patient with F2 fibrosis at the baseline and a, F1 fibrosis at the end of treatment at week 36. So it is improved in fibrosis. But at the same time, we see a lot of uh, fat reduction. So you see MIPDFF reduction, 47%. At the same time, you see liver volume reduction, 28%. So something we, we, we kind of anticipated, but it's kind of also surprised to see a liver volume reduction that much as well. But if we look at the AI assessment, so this is looking at the pathologies, uh, what, what trying to see what pathology is looking at. So you can see over here, the portal tracks, the central vein. But what I want to highlight to you is this TO area zone two. Okay, so basically this is the area outside portal track, outside central vein. So in the baseline, it takes up 78% of the area. At the base uh, end of treatment is 71% of the area. So it doesn't really change much. So what we are trying to say is that vis visually, it seems like there's not much difference. You know, while there's this, drast this drastic status reduction, it didn't really change much the architecture. If you just look at it, it's pretty much similar. So with that in mind, then how, where, can uh, we just again want to see further, can steatosis uh, reduction of fibrosis, where is it happening? So. This is another paper we published in Journal of Pathology earlier this year. So what we did here uh, is really looking at uh, steatosis corrected fibrosis and looking at different zones. Over here, you see the portal area, periportal area, transitional, pericentral, and central area, okay? So um, I'm gonna show you what the methodology did. So this is what we mean by steatosis area correction. So over here, you have the full tissue left, you hide outline in the white color. This is from needle biopsy. So you can see the white color shows you where the full tissue area is. 
And then on the right, you see the steatosis area, which is shown in blue, okay? So what we did is we, 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 do, we deduct the steatosis area from the full tissue area. So what you left at the bottom is the tissue area with steatosis removed. And this is how we use the fibrosis, uh, uh, sorry, how, this is how we define tissue steatosis area correction. Okay, so with this definition and the methodology we, we published in hepat journal hepatology, we applied the same methodology uh, with the, the data you seen earlier. Um, so over now, just now we show you that with fully quantitative assessment, we now see statistical significant change of fibrosis. And this now enables us to see where those changes are. So over here, you can see that uh, we with a placebo and treated group in the peripotal region, okay, you see the treated group fibrosis reduction. Now we reach statistical significance, significance of P of 0 0.02. So it shows you that the fibrosis improvement is centric, centered around the peripotal region. So this is the kind of tool that we, the AI can help to investigate uh, the questions. So uh, just now I show you just one parameter of how it is done. So what we did with our AI is that there's 184 parameters. Okay, I'm not gonna highlight, I'm not, I'm not going to get into going to, to all of them, how it is done. For example, you can see over here you have the, the number of strings of collagen, you have the string, string, string length, etc. So this is what the computer is very good at. It can measure all different collagen. But what I want to show you is that there are a lot of collagen that fibrosis, uh, the AI is looking at. And in the initial assessment, assessment, the, 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 the only 15 out of 184 parameters in regressed patients, you see statistical significant change. And in the progressed patient, it's only four out of 184 parameters you can see change. Now, if I apply the steatosis area correction I mentioned earlier, now you can see the number of parameters showed statistical significance is now increased to 85 in regressed patients and 64 in progressed patients. So now you can see where the changes are, and you can also at the same time see the impact of steatosis cor correction. So what we're hyper uh, summarizing is that for the first part, AI can help us to identify and record all potential meaningful features. So this is something that the, the right now the human can't really do because they, uh, really just taking one number at the end of the day. So most of this information uh, is not being captured. And by integration of the second only generation microscope, it, at the same time, improve the reproducibility. And with visualization tools like radar map, then it gives you holistic and yet specific view of fibrosis changes. So with this, if we integrate with the status reduction, so what we, ask, we have seen is that steatosis reduction is drastic in a very short clinical trials. This can be as fast as 12 weeks in some of these trials, the, the one I showed you earlier. But it is our hypothesis is that if the fibrosis does not resolve so fast in the 12 weeks, then the impact of drug therapy on Nash fibrosis regression can be more cannot reflect accurately, and it can be more appropriately assessed by methods such as steatosis error correction. So we basically, with this assumption, the data can show where the fibrosis is changing. So while this current data underscore the need of consider the impact of this hepatic change on fibrosis, so we really need to look at this when we design our clinical trials especially with the ones that really regress hepatic fat, okay? So to summarize, this help us to understand, to investigate what we do not know about fibrosis. These are something we just learn as we go in clinical trials. So uh, the very last summary is the role of AI 
is really essential to understand the mechanism of action of drugs and for designing later phase clinical trials. And it is critical you consider these issues and collect this data now for your uh, clinical trial eva uh, evaluation. So with that, I'd like to thank you and wrap up the session. Thank you.